Welcome to Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger, the podcast where we, as people, watch the episode of the television series Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and thereafter discuss it with our mouth holes. Ew. <laughs> mouth holes? Speak for your own mouth hole. Uh, today we'll be watching episode number 42 yep. of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which is entitled A Pig Surprise. <laughs> Just to be clear, because I don't have the best voice, that's pig as in swine. Yep, it is a pig <laughs> surprise. Not, not. wow, that's a big surprise. No, no, no. Substitute the big. It's a pig surprise. I imagine it's another pig monster. Maybe it's the same pig monster. Oh, do you think you could see the return of... My hope of hopes Pudgy is, pig. is that Pudgy Pig comes back. That would be great. Pudgy Pig is a favourite of yep. ours and made it quite high... Onto our list of favourite monsters, yep. which we'll discuss more towards the end of the show. Before we do that, www.rangerdangerpodcast.com is the place on the vast desert of the internet where you can find our oasis of Ranger Danger <laughs> podcasting information. Uh, you could send us an email to the email address, rangerdangerpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we also have a Twitter and you can uh, Twitter us at Ranger D Cast <laughs> yep, on at Twitter. Ranger D Cast. We also do YouTube. Yep. We do iTunes. Yep. We do Facebook. Yep. And we stitch the stitches. Sure. We keep forgetting to discuss yeah, what I'm stitcher still actually is. About that. Yeah. Uh, Michael still hasn't told us. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a mystery. Anyway, so uh, for all I know, Stitcher isn't real, and Michael made it up. I sent you a link to. Oh, uh, anyway. We got another email this week. Woo woo! We're getting very excited about the frequency with which we're getting emails. We are. Like, I say woo woo, and that might sound sarcastic. That's a real woo woo. Yep. Um, I'm worried it's going to Matt's head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Matt, would you like to read this new email? Desperately. It is from Brandon. Oh. That's not the Brandon who emailed us last week. Yeah. But the Brandon who emailed us several weeks ago. Yeah, I know this Brandon. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I bl- uh, from memory, he found us through Ajax. Yep, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay, so Brandon says, Hi again. I just listened to your special episode on Zaya Ranger. That's good. We like that. Yeah. Thank you. We should have actually reminded people that that's there in case they missed it. Yeah. Oh, so reminder, we did a special episode on where we watched an episode of Zaya Ranger, which is the Japanese uh, Power Rangers, yep. basically. It was about uh, a month ago now. It was a yeah. while back. Uh, yeah, and you can find that at all the places. On the that, website, in the iTunes feed, yeah. On the YouTubes. Okay, sorry. Back to the email. Uh, and he says, and for the record, I'm totally in favour of you guys doing that again. Well, all right. That's good. Maybe we'll do that again. <laughs> I was also really listening to some old episodes, and I wanted to drop some various Sire Ranger trivia that has been in the back of my mind. Oh, this is Ooh, exciting. Let's drop some knowledge facts, Brandon. Let's go. <laughs> wow, you're so ready for this. I'm ready for some knowledge <laughs> facts, man. The reason why the Zords appear in heaven in the opening is, is because in Sire Ranger, the Zords are actual sentient beings slash gods. And the Megazord is, for all intents and purposes, supposed to be God. Whoa! Whoa. No, really? Yeah. No, it's had the Dai shit Jujutsu? punched out of it a lot of times yeah. for God. Yeah. I imagine that's why it's not God in Power Rangers. Yeah, well, no, if, I think that's one of several reasons why it's not God. If Big Robot Jesus got the shit kicked out of him every <laughs> week on American television, there'd be a lot more letters of complaint. <laughs> Suddenly uh, at 3.30 <laughs> on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the Ultra Zord being God's complete form. There you go. That's kind of fucked It's actually up. really crazy. <laughs> Is that like the Megazord, the Dragon Zord, and Titanus are the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And they that come makes together a... into... Uh, no, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, this suddenly got into Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> We're entering Jesus territory. This is where I, you know, go off in the exit around. <laughs> But look, if you have to learn about Jesus, I want it to be with him as a giant robot. He teams up with a giant turtle (laughs) and a giant dragon to form an even bigger robot. Uh, He then says, you guys talked about Squat being a surprisingly adept villain, which is definitely true, which is why he ranks so high on our list of favourite villains. We'll get, again, get to that later. Matt's really excited because he's (laughs) really subtly foreshadowing. (laughs) In Zyre Ranger, he actually had a gun he would occasionally use when confronted by the Raiders. Whoa! Okay, this further cements my belief that Squat is a splinter cell. Yep. Um, and exists in a world of Tom Clancy novels that happens to cross over. <laughs> Haven't you ever read Rainbow Six, Matt? <laughs> it's all about Squat. Oh, 
<laughs> if it was, I would read all of those <laughs> books. Uh, whenever Bandora, which is Rita, Rita uh, would feel particularly victorious, she would bust out into song. Oh, what? Wow. Okay. We need to watch some more, I think. He says, as seen here, it provides a link. We'll check that out. I'll check that out. I'll put the link in the show notes yeah. as well. Uh, he said, he also wants to give us a heads up slash warning about powering to samurai. Whoa, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's very far in advance, but that's okay. Yeah. Let's keep going. All right. Are you, are you bracing yourself for this? Is this about future? No, not the thing you're thinking of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bulk is back I for that series and brings back the painted goop on his face stick. Uh, All right, we're quitting this before we get to Samurai. <laughs> so you probably die first. It's okay. Uh, Brandon, very... <laughs> uh, oh, Christ. <laughs> no, it's all right. You'll be dead. You won't have to worry about it at all. <laughs> to large credit, that's probably preferable. It's probably true. I mean, like, let's say, you know, if people use the track mat, you might have kids. And then... And then you'll be dead. <laughs> no, I was you'll be dead. I'll say you probably have less time to do this. Oh, we'll be oh, doing it with the children. With the I children? hope you understand. Oh, okay. We'll be raising them on Power Rangers, oh, as all children kids should be hate raised. You. That's right. They can hate me. I'm Uncle Michael. I'm adorable. The weird Uncle Michael. Don't call you. And Brandon very kindly apologizes and says so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah. There's a bit more of that email that you. Ah. Just... There's a PS. I don't understand these emails. Formats. It came as two separate emails. I see. Okay. He says PS more trivia. Yes. Uh, the Thunderslingers actually get reused multiple times in Zyra Rangers. Oh, well, that makes more sense than the once that they got used in... In the uh, episode that they got them. Yep. In Power Rangers. Bandora's son is killed by a T-Rex because he was breaking the T-Rex's eggs. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and then he comes back and pilots Cyclopsis. Ah. But they couldn't explain that Rita had a secret dead son. Yeah. So they gave it to Goldar instead. And, of course, Rita will, in fact, have a son later on. His name is Rito, because... No, no, no R- Rito is, is her brother. Oh, he's her brother, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. They uh, do have a son, Yeah, there's but a, he's got a different name. He's the son of Rita and Lord Zed. Shh. Sorry. We're not up to him yet. Okay. We talk about stuff in the future all the time. I know, but I don't like it when we do that. Okay, I apologise. Uh, and the final bit of... Trivia um, that Brandon mentions is that the Zyra Rangers apparently came from a race of humans descended from dinosaurs, which I'm pretty sure we we Does knew. That make sense? But it's it's strange. I don't think that's science, yeah. but then again, there's not a lot about this show that makes scientific sense. So, is there anything about the show that makes scientific sense? Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you're a witch on the moon, you can throw yourself all the way to Earth. And I'm also pretty sure if you're a head in a tube, that makes you a wizard. <laughs> Can we test this like test this empirically? Like, can uh, we go yeah. find a witch and, and take her to the moon? If you can find a witch, all right. I will put all of my money towards it's taking her to the, the moon. the top of my to-do list. That's good. Cool. Michael, that's incredibly irresponsible. <laughs> if you take a witch to the moon, you know what's going to happen. But then the Power Rangers will come to save us. And you us. get to meet the Power Rangers, Matthew. We'll see. I just don't think it's worth the risk, you guys. You're being very reckless. Uh, and the final thing Brandon says is, sorry if this seems like excess trivia, which, no, no that was all amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Cool. So, yeah. There's that. Yeah. Uh, uh, once again, we're the most popular podcast among Brandons. Yep. Yeah, number one. Power Woo-hoo. Rangers podcast among people named Brandon. That's right. And we'll defend that title. Yep. If there's any other Power Rangers podcast out there that thinks they're popular among people named Brandon, we will fight them to the pain. <laughs> First pain. Yeah, we'll stop at pain. But First look, pain tap look, out. We all love this show, right? But I'm not but dying for it. Okay? Matt would die for this show. I would die. Well, you can fight first then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to go watch a pig surprise. And I hope that there is a pig surprise. I think it's will be a su- It can't be a surprise now because we'll be expecting it. This show has surprised us. On occasions. What if it turns out the pig becomes the new Pink Ranger? That would be pretty surprising. <laughs> that would be su- just... How would it fit in a suit? Like oh, it, would... it transforms when it morphs. So it becomes like a tall pig. Like a, like a, yeah, like it's also a... a horrifying man <laughs> pig. <laughs> man <laughs> pig. Yeah, a terrible man <laughs> pig. That's what it becomes. Uh, haven't you ever heard the episode, Terrible Man Pig? Terrible <laughs> Man Pig. That's, that's the, the next episode. episode. <laughs> Welcome to Terrible Man Pig. 
Mighty Morphin Terrible Man Pig. Um, <laughs> Spin-off series. Oh, that doesn't sound that different to Big Bad Beetle Bogs, which well, is mean, an actual show. Look, at this point, it couldn't possibly be weirder than that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the surprise actually is. Uh, so we'll see you in a sec. See you soon, guys. Welcome back. We just watched the a pig surprise. The pig surprise. Uh, I kind of loved it. Yeah. yeah oh, big time. Yeah. I was I was pretty chuffed, especially coming after last week's episode. It was really delightful. I mean, anything that starts with adorable baby animals is just yeah. And look, I said up front that if Pudgy Pig comes back, I'll be very happy. Pudgy Pig came back, and I was very happy. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. All right. So it's Angel Grove's annual pet adoption day. Yes. Where, of course, the rangers are working at a stall in the park. Yeah. Do you remember in the first episode when Zordon requested Teenagers with Attitude? Yeah. The, They're not Teenagers with Attitude now. The, They're the, the most civically responsible <laughs> teenagers on that, the face of the planet. They're workers' power rangers that are making them better people. They've <laughs> kind of always been like that. Oh, so, like, when he needs Attitude, they're like... Well, a good Attitude. Like, oh, okay. they, they had Attitude in the first episode in that... Sort of ask them to be Power Rangers, and they're kind of like, no, nah, not really, man. <laughs> and it took them 15 minutes to be talked around. Yeah, one time Trini sassed her mum. Like, <laughs> yeah. She was like, I don't want to eat my damn vegetables. And like, he's like, oh, oh, oh. she's got attitude, Missy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's where their attitude ends. Yeah. yeah. So now they're very boring people. <laughs> I don't want to present the opinion to our listeners that doing the right thing all the time is boring. It's pretty boring. It's pretty boring. Yeah. You guys would make terrible role models. I'm hey well, kids, I am well kids, aware of that. Don't do the right thing all the time. It's dull as shit. No. <laughs> go, just do just the, break all the fucking rules. Do the rules. right thing most of the time, but you have to break some rules. you got to spice things up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's right. you got to get your blood pumping. All I'm saying is I would be the one who was picked to be a Power Ranger. Yes. Your a- would be like, oh... I guess Michael's going to be a Power Ranger. You'd be Bulk and Skull. Uh, I don't think we'd be Bulk and Skull. I think we'd be the cool kids who don't get involved in all with the action and we wouldn't even be attacked by the party because we're off like, at parties, hooking up and stuff. <laughs> I'd That's be a hot villain like a strong one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dibs on Scorpina. There you <laughs> go. Jesus Christ. Okay, so uh, there's some puppies. And a bunny. And a bunny. And a, a, bunny. Bunny. a bunny rabbit. They, you yeah. know. Pretty cute baby animals. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty shameless pandering, if I'm <laughs> honest. Yeah. Um, the dialogue of this show has gotten super preachy in the last two or three weeks. Yeah. It's got to be responsible. Yeah. I feel like now we hit pretty hard with the complaints about parents being too violent. Yeah. I'm like, no, look, guys, we're doing good work yeah. here. Mm. No, kids, trees and puppies. <laughs> trees and puppies are good. Do <laughs> trees and, yeah, good work, kids. And stop punching your grandmothers. <laughs> so... <laughs> a lady walks up, walking a pig. Yeah. What the shit? Yeah. That's not that. Um, that's not no, that, that's a reason. It's people more common nowadays, I think. Yeah. People, especially crazy old ladies, I yeah. feel like. If anyone's going to have a pet pig, it's going to be a crazy old lady. And, and like, you know, Lauren and I especially spend a lot of time in the city. With pigs. <laughs> with pigs. Mm. You see pigs in I the city. I was walking a ferret the other week in the park, and it was like... He was just walking along, and the ferret was just like walking, like dragged behind him, like rolling around. And the guy was like, "Oh, I give no fucks!" Like it was amazing. I mean, I feel like when you decide to go walk a ferret, mm. you've just made up your mind mm. about how your day is going to go. I think so. At the start. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, no, but I mean, the thing I found odd about the whole exchange was this woman like wants to get rid of her pig. She then cries, and no one's like, "Oh, if you love your pig so much, why do you have to get rid why of it?" You marry yeah, it? no, but they don't. They just take the pig because the obvious answer is, "I'm dying of cancer. I need someone to take my pig before she I pass." She didn't say, "I'm dying of cancer." No, but I'm just saying, like, that's the obvious. I reason. don't think Was the it? point of pet adoption days is to go and drop <laughs> off your unwanted <laughs> pet. No, I thought they'd be getting animals from the pound. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it was like everybody. If you, if you had a cat and are sick of it because it's two months <laughs> after Christmas and your little shit son who said he'd feed it has never done anything, uh, just come drop it off at the park and we'll give it to someone who will actually love it. I'm telling you, she has no family. She's got one month to live. She wants to find someone to care for a pig. She's a putty. Yes. <laughs> that is how it turns out. I just think they need to be a little bit more suspicious of people. Like, here I am, bringing this pig. Like, you know, I can barely speak like a human being. It just doesn't... I think it's the point there where they're like, 
they go to buy a hot dog at the hot dog stand, and the guy doesn't have a perfect grasp of English, <laughs> and he just grabs them by the face, he's like, are you a buddy? Are you a buddy? <laughs> Oh. I love how you just had your Batman voice. Like, like <laughs> no, that'd be, Are you a bunny? <laughs> Tell me where Reader is! <laughs> I'm going to have to adjust the audio on that so we don't blow out the mic. <laughs> um, so, the pig's name is Norman. Yeah. yeah. Because of course it is. Yeah. Um, so, Zach wasn't at Pet Adoption Day. He's running late or... Has he knew because he checked the time on his communicator, which doesn't have the time on it. doesn't have any kind of display at all. No. Um, That's so, acting. <laughs> so, Zach sees the old lady acting strangely in the park. Yeah. What's going on? She's a putty. What? Which, what? Look, I'll That's be honest. That's a big surprise. <laughs> I'll be honest. That's not what I was expecting. Yeah. But... That doesn't make it okay. <laughs> what do you mean it's not I okay? I thought she was going to be uh, squat when she started That's absolutely dancing what I was around. Yeah, yeah, I was expecting her to be squat because she had like squat's body shape. No offense, old lady. But, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this putty has got some sort of weird science device. Yeah. And you can tell it's a science device because it's, it's a spinning got a spinny thing, thing on top thing of it. On it. Yeah. it looks kind of like a camera. Yeah. But. Not really. I thought it looked like a recorder of some type of, yeah. So, uh, Zach fights some putties. It was a pretty awesome fight. It's a pretty good fight. Like, this fight in particular made me really appreciate Zach and his abilities. I love watching Zach fight. Like, especially when Jason fights one on, like, one on four, it's just kind of boring. But, like, Zach is just, he's got talent. Yeah, Yeah. he's got some pizzazz to him. We talked about how Adam is my favourite ranger. Yes. But I think, like, before him, Zach... It's mm. probably pretty you just high like up. all the Black Rangers. That's right. Once you go Black Ranger, you, you never, never go, go Black Ranger. Ranger. <laughs> no, that's true. I went down on a bump. I'm so glad we were both there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. If only one of us had been in that place, that would have been really weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah. he, he fights the putties, he beats the putties, mm. he picks up the weird science device. Meanwhile, Bulk and Skull come up at the end of the day. Yep. They want a pet. And they want something cool and different and, like, not a puppy. Yeah. They get the pig. Yeah. And it's a pretty cute scene, I thought. This is, it's like, the of... best thing I've seen on this show. This this relationship of Bulk and Skull and their pig. Oh, my God. If every episode with Bulk and Skull was like this, I would be a happy woman. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like if things had gone okay for them in this episode, yeah. they would have been cured. All they needed was the love of a good animal. <laughs> love of a good Whoa, pig. hold on. <laughs> <laughs> a certain kind of love. Okay. Um, so, and the next thing we see is the pig at Angel Grove High School. Yeah. Now has like a Shakespearean ruffled collar yeah. and a bandana. Yeah. He had a ruffled collar? I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. I just saw the bandana. He's, he's pretty cause, rad pig. Because he's a punk pig. Now. He's a punk pig. <laughs> um, basically, Bog tries to get him to do some tricks to impress people. Which is a bad plan when he must already know that it doesn't do tricks. I mean, he's had it for at least an evening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I'd be starting with trying to get it to roll over. Yeah. You know, maybe practice that at home some first. Don't just go, yeah, sure, you can roll over. Look, roll over. Oh. Oh, sad face. You can't roll over. It was still adorable. Yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah. anything that happened between the pig and them was just really, really, really cute. cute. Yeah. yeah. It was really nice just seeing Bulk excited about something. Happy and, about life. Yeah, happy about life. And then, like, Not having life shit on him almost right. literally every week. And I mean, like, Skull, um, Skull standing there with his little pig book reading out facts. Yeah. Like, everything he, he, about it. He I was just, working I hard loved to be a good, responsible pig owner. It was yeah. really yeah. sweet. Yeah, it was sweet. So, meanwhile, Billy is doing some science. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and he says that the device. Has some sort of timing mechanism that's counting down to zero. Yeah. Although I have no idea when that will occur. Uh, yeah, I was like, what? Okay, so, <laughs> so if it's counting down, and you yeah, know it's going to be zero, and you know at what speed it's counting down, yeah, it's not a particularly difficult task to extrapolate. Oh, that's when it's going to hit zero. Look, I mean, if it was Jason, I can yeah. imagine him going. No, it's too hard, man. Five, <laughs> four, three. I don't know when it's going to stop. Jeez. What comes up to three, four? <laughs> but Billy, like, he could make a flying car. He's got this. Yeah. 
Science is his thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Look. Oh like, well. His yeah. slip up wasn't as stupid as Trini's, and uh, because during this scene, Trini goes, "Oh, that's right. I remember the old lady. You know, Zach was talking about an old lady and Norman, and like it's a day later, <laughs> yeah. a day later, Trini, you are better than this. This is something fucking Kimberly or Jason would do. You, <laughs> like, not acceptable, girl." Zach says to her, "Who's Norman?" And she says. Vulcan Skull's pig. And then that's it. That's the last of his questions. Yeah. Like, Vulcan Skull having a pig is not strange. It's not... It's just, oh, yeah, of course, they've got a pig. That's like, sure, fine. I'll take that. Um, so they run back... To, basically, as far as they can tell, something sinister is going on with the pig. Yeah. Right? So they run back to school. Uh, that's because they got this... From Billy pointing a science gun at the science box. Yeah, I don't know what that thing was meant to be. It was be. like a science gun with tongs on it. It had fire on the end. It was pretty cool. But... What? I, yeah. Look, I'm not going to say that I know everything about science, right? There yeah. are certainly some blind spots in my general knowledge. But I don't think that's a science thing. But who knows? If there are any scientists out there who ever use science guns... We can ask Daniel... If you, we should we, very much we, do that. We'll inquire with Daniel when we get him on. Um, have you ever used a science gun? And we'll say, <laughs> what? And we'll say, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, Wait, so, what's your first question? Write that down. <laughs> so, look, they have to try and find Bulk and Skull because something's going to happen with the pig. Yeah. Um, and they split up to do so, which makes sense. Bulk and Skull are at the gym juice bar. Yes. Um, school is still in session. Because they all the other rangers were at school. They could have in the time, the time cut. They could have no. Okay, they were. I mean, fine. something. Yeah, but you know, I don't know what's going on there. Um. So, Rita casts a spell to uh, make. Um, can we back up to the point where it's been a day since they've had the pig, and they already have a a, a pet dish for Norman with the name Norman blazoned on it, which is adorable. Like they are so committed to having this pig. That Bulk, when he's eating his sandwich, looks over the table to see that Norman is also enjoying his snack. Like, it is the greatest thing. To be fair, they also try and use the pig to pick up. Yeah. No, well, that's Skull, like... Skull does that. <laughs> A girl comes up and says, he's adorable, what's his name? And Skull says, Bulk. <laughs> Which is also really cute. Yeah, definitely <laughs> some fuel for the fire there, I think. But, um... But I don't think, is it Rita casting a spell or is it the timer running out? Well, that's the thing. That is a good question. Goldar yeah. says it's time to cast the spell. What? And Rita casts a spell. Yeah. So. But but Billy also says the time has gone off and that's So what, decides. is the spell casting the timer? It's some strange fusion of magic and technology we can't possibly fathom. <laughs> it's our like, limited understanding. It needed to have a timer and a device so that the Power Rangers could understand that something suspicious was going on. Yeah, that's true. But Rita has to do it because otherwise it's just going to be science and not evil magic. Yeah. So we get the worst of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> but that's immediately followed up by Norman turning into Pudgy Pig. Yeah. I was so, so happy. happy. I oh, hadn't seen a... Pudgy Pig before, and I thought he was amazing. He's, he's like, a, a giant pig. This is like just a pig's he's head. Not even a, pig. a pig's he's head. A like he's yeah. a pig's with head with little, legs, little arms and legs, and a centurion's helmet. Yeah, and because he... of course he does. Why is anyway? I don't care why he has a centurion's helmet. That's awesome. I just love the way he just mumbles incessantly, like <laughs> yeah. the creepy old man, and just waves his little yeah, arms like, everywhere. Like, oh, like he's just fucking. Oh my god! And and like, what's his motivation? Does he just want food? Well, yes. the last time we saw him, the plan was that he was going to eat. All the all world's the food. food. All the food in all the whole the world. All the food. Any food. He is ambitious. All and any no, food. he was going to do it in 24 hours. True story. He was eating quite slowly in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Like, he would have wanted to have, like... His heart wasn't really in it like it was last was time. He, no. was, it, was he going to be, like, Colossus? Like, how he, he, like, you know, gains momentum as he goes? So, like, no. He stop? No, okay. no, you're thinking Juggernaut. But, Juggernaut. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> He's like, fuck off, man. <laughs> fuck <laughs> Shut off, you. So <laughs> obviously <the> nerd shit. <laughs> uh, although Colossus was the juggernaut for a little while. 
Oh, how do you know I wasn't making some awesome reference? Because no one has ever made a reference to that because it was kind of dumb. Yeah, no, it wasn't dumb. It was, it was cool. kind of dumb. Dude, come on. Have you read it? Yes. It was kind of dumb. Was Shall we save of... this for your X-Men podcast? Yeah, yeah my name yeah. an X-Men daddy. <laughs> um, but then I'm he... saying, if you call the work of Kieran Gillen dumb... I no, think... I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, that anyway... Let's move Ladies, on. Ladies, enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I, I also just like the part when uh, the pig is advancing on Vulcan Skull, Vulcan skull yeah. and they're clearly really upset by this, and and you know getting to do the whole "We're your parents, look at our faces." That's Again. so cute. Oh my god, this episode is un like is just unreasonably cute. So Zach runs in. Yeah. yeah. It takes him about three seconds to adjust to the situation. He's doing very well. Yeah. He's a bad He's a level-headed dude. He's just, oh, it's Pudgy Pig. All right, duh. <laughs> what, else, what else was going to happen this week? <laughs> um, so he figures out that what Pudgy Pig wants is just the sandwich that Bulk's got. Yeah. And uh, Bulk says, but I haven't eaten since lunch. <laughs> Look, it's light outside still. <laughs> it's five o'clock at the latest. He's I, I, a growing boy, I, Michael. I think that's the joke there. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. I think, but it it's is. hard to tell. Of sometimes. course, that's the joke. The, the joke show. is, ha ha, fat people. Which is kind of an ongoing thing. <laughs> which, yeah, it happens again later. I wrote a note about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So look, basically, after that, Pudgy Pig teleports away. And you said, and I quote, re, uh, listeners. Did he just turn into a Dorito? Well, there's kind of like a mini explosion and then he becomes a yellow triangle and then <laughs> teleports away. I wondered that maybe he'd become a Dorito. That wouldn't even be the weirdest thing to have happened in this half hour. <laughs> That's very true. So, Zach teleports back to the command centre yeah. where all the other Power Rangers are waiting for him. Yeah. Apparently having given up on the search for Norman. They just said they were searching. <laughs> very lazy. Yeah, Zach, go find the pig, dude. <laughs> yeah, we'll find We're it. We're right later. behind you. <laughs> um now they're faced with a moral dilemma. They can't hurt Pudgy Pig because he's a real pig. Yeah. Underneath. Inside. Yeah. So they're just gonna have to deal with him somehow. Yeah. <sighs> Did anyone else? This is this is the point where Zordon calls him an overweight <laughs> menace. <laughs> Which I feel like probably wouldn't fly these days. I was just like, whoa, with the, fl- the fat chipping, sorry, you can be so slim living in a tube. <laughs> it's, so really, yeah, it's really easy to be skinny when you're just a head. Yeah. When you can't eat Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, so, this is why there's no fat packages, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, so him, like, a couple times Alpha's trying to cast them, and he's like, uh, no, I don't like this kid for some reason. And Alpha's like, oh, really? What's your reason? He just have, has, like, a shifty look about him. Oh, okay, shifty look. It's just so mean. It's horrible. It's unnecessarily mean. Um, so, look, they go and fight Pudgy Pig. And, uh, what we see... Is the footage from the last time they saw Pudgy Pig? I'm pretty sure it Almost is. Almost certainly. Yeah. A few shots I, I remember being like, that looks like exactly. Like the pulsing tail. The pulsing tail, I and, uh, remembered. No spoilers, but when we get to some later fights, I'm pretty sure they're all recycled as well. Ah, oh, fuck off. I think every piece of like Japanese footage we've seen in this episode yeah. is from an episode, has been used in an episode already. Okay. Which makes it. A really fascinating, like, reuse situation. Mm. Like, they decided, well, we've got the Pudgy Pig costume here anyway. Maybe we could just Do build something again. around. Yeah. Um, I think, as shitty as that is and lazy, the benefit of that is that they did have to do some story gymnastics, yep. mm. which I think was what made it a bit more interesting this time. Yeah. They couldn't just do a standard story. Yep. So, yeah. um. So they fight Pudgy Pig, he teleports away again. Yeah. If you ever wanted to see the Power Rangers run around a farm, guys, because you're in luck. <laughs> as soon as we get the American actors in the suits, it immediately looks so much more dorky. I yeah. don't know what it, it is. It does. They just don't it's carry It's the way it. they move. Yeah. They, they move really, yeah, really jerkily, because you guys can't see this, but Matt just did robot arms. Robot arms. Um, mm. But, yeah, they just kind of like, I don't know, they just jog around like, Little wimps, really. Like and they, they don't, don't look, fill out the suits. They don't. Well, they don't look like soldiers. They mm. look like you know little kids on Halloween dressing up. Like yeah. it's it's yeah. It's it totally doesn't work. Um. So look, they run around a farm for a bit. 
pudgy pig is dancing <laughs> <laughs> in a pig pen. <laughs> Because why, Michael? Why, because Michael? Because he wants to fuck a female. <laughs> hey, Which, don't be so like, crass. He's falling fair, in love. He knows anything about sex. It's the reason most dudes dance. Not oh, people. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. But. Yeah, sure. But <sighs> he fell in love. He, that's right. He fell in love with a, an actual pig. And that proves to them that he's Norman still on the inside, because. None of Rita's real monsters could ever fall in love that way. <laughs> that was a bit. Which, Jesus Christ, guys. <laughs> that's a bit like, we've seen Goldar and Scorpina have a kind of thing. But I think it's more the monsters that Finster creates. Like, I talked right. before about my theory that they don't have souls. Yeah. Because they're just... They're clay. Putty. They're yeah. clay. Um, and that's why it's okay that the Power Rangers kill the putties, basically. Right. So yeah. that, I'm, I'm, con- I'm happy with that logic. You're happy with the logic that... Things made of clay cannot feel love. Yeah. It's so bleak. It's yeah. bleak. That's fine. <laughs> um, look, long story short, they basically just leave Pudgy Pig there. Yeah, not after Kimley's like, you at them. Once again, showing that she's kind of a, a really shallow bitch. <laughs> she's a horrible person. She is. Just in so many ways. Um, but look, it turns out that Pudgy Pig was a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> the actual plan was for Goldar to go down and destroy Angel Grove. While they're distracted by Pudgy Pig. And well, he's the problem. Reader's tried that four or five but times. But he's the real problem, right? He doesn't start destroying Angel Grove until they've located Pudgy Pig. Yeah. And even if he was going to destroy it earlier, it's not like the first time he grew in the middle of Angel Grove, they weren't going to go, well, she will go deal with that first, and then we'll find the harmless pig monster. Yeah. Like, it's... A distraction doesn't work if it's not a distraction on the same scale as the other thing. And at the same time. To split their efforts. Yeah. Because all this does is just, oh, that feels Add to their list minutes. of things to do. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, they fight Goldar for a bit. I'm pretty sure we've seen this. Yeah, uh, that well. scene, especially the, the, I thought the Zord scene was extremely drawn out. Like, yeah. they were just fleshing, like, the a fuck time. out of that. Like, it was ridiculous. We really got to see the full Megazon transformation. Yep. Even was... the little bit where you see the glowing queen. Oh, the... dude, it was ridiculous. I was just like, hurry oh, yeah. <laughs> up. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, that happens. They call down the power sword again. Yeah. And again, they call it the mega sword for the second episode in a row. Yeah. You'd think someone would have it on a post-it note or something. <laughs> yeah. There's a the... reason it's not called the mega sword. Because that sounds exactly yeah. like Megazord, and it's confusing. But if they were to call it the Megazord, yeah. that would be kind of clever and, like, the thing to do, yeah. right? But they didn't do that 40 episodes ago, yeah. so it's too late to change what it's called. <laughs> it's like Zordon said to them, hey, guys, you know the giant sword? I had a thought. It'd be much cleverer if we <laughs> called it the Mega Sword. Yeah, because it sounds like there, Megazord. Right? So if you could do that from now on. <laughs> I know we decided on Power Sword because you're the Power Rangers, but I think this is funnier. So <laughs> let's do that. Is that in like their weekly meeting? Yes, yeah. it's yeah. the team meeting, team Wednesday meeting. morning, 10.30. <laughs> Trini would bake for it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They have fresh muffins, blueberry. Yeah. They're yeah. lovely. Jason is asleep the whole time. <laughs> Kimberly is painting her nails. Billy's like. taking notes. <laughs> and Zach is sitting there with like a chessboard strategizing. <laughs> like doing the important stuff the team needs to do. Oh, Alpha 5 is in a corner just aye, dancing, aye, aye. rapping or something. <laughs> rapping. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a point at which Alpha 5 raps. I'll be disappointed if he doesn't. He definitely does. You need a rapping um, robot. So look, that's basically it. Goldar teleports away because... That's what he does. For Goldar, and that's what he does. They go back to Pudgy Pig. Um, we find out that Billy's managed to reverse the polarity on the science thing. Yep. And turn <laughs> Pudgy Pig back into a real pig. Yep. Back into Norman. Aww. Uh, where he can live happily ever after with his little pig lady. That's what they say. They yep. say that the owner of the female pig has decided to adopt Norman. Yeah. And Kimberly says that they will live happily ever after. Yeah. They're going to be bacon tomorrow. Yeah, look, I'm not an expert <laughs> here again, but... My belief is that most people who raise pigs on farms... Yeah. Farm them. They're not doing it, like, not exclu- for fun. Not exclusively. No, but Sorry. they're not milking them. No. Right? Oh, no. Okay, so they could be breeding them. They could be breeding them to make more pigs, which then they will kill. 
or because young pigs generally they would prefer to eat or they it could be a sa- animal sanctuary you know like where that, like the angel grove pig sanctuary is that what I can say one, it was one of those three pigs. things is good yeah. one of them is they live happily ever after except that the farmers eat their children <laughs> yeah and but the they just have lots of sex lots of pig sex and then have their babies be eaten yeah that's less good <laughs> That's less good. Should mention that both Matthew and I are vegetarians. <laughs> I don't give a shit. They can eat the pigs. That's fine. I just I, let's not pretend that it's going to be happy. Yeah, but it's Kimberly. Them. Like she probably thinks that bacon comes from the bacon tree. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like, it doesn't. Sorry, <laughs> we'll, true. let's have a chat after okay. this. <laughs> um, uh, for we, some reason, yeah, uh, the principal slash only teacher at this school <laughs> anymore brings in. A pig. He, he does say, though, that he's substituting for Miss Appleby. Yeah. Which is good that they finally hand wave the fact that he's the principal, but he's t- taking yeah. class. Validating our theory from last week, so yeah. booyah. Two teachers. Yeah. yeah. Us, yeah. Woo. Uh, yeah. And he, yeah, he brings in a pig, as Michael's about to say. Yep. Uh, Buck and Skull have a post-traumatic stress attack. <laughs> yeah. A and very every- serious thing. <laughs> and everybody laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Teenagers can be cruel. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's that. Pretty much. I, mean, good, good I liked time. most of the episode, but I felt like it kind of descended a bit. Like, it started off really awesome. Yeah, then, I mean, there was a c- certain dip. Yeah. Um, the, like, from the fight scene with Goldaron, I was just like, yeah. Given that they're just straight up reusing bits of all episodes, yeah. though, it could have been a lot worse. That's very true. Um, so, what we were going to do at the end of the episode was, uh, if you guys have been listening for a long time, may recall that we did a list of the top 30 worst monsters in the first 30 episodes of Power Rangers. Yep. What Mark and I have gone through and done is update that list to include the monsters from the previous weeks. Yep. And now every week what we're going to go through and do is add the monsters into the ranking yep. and discuss why we're placing them in certain places on the ranking. This week is actually, it turns out, a terrible week to introduce this new feature. Yeah. Because the monster for this week is a monster that we've already seen. Yeah. Um, which we didn't know ahead of time. No. But I was thinking what we could do is take the two monsters that appeared this week and reevaluate their places yeah, on the list. Absolutely. And uh, uh, before we get to that, we've been trying to come up with a name for this feature. Yeah, it's going to be a segment. So yeah, we need a we're going to do it probably every week. Yeah. Um, it needs a name. Something mm-hmm. monsters, something lists. Something clever and funny, yeah. hopefully. Uh, we've got nothing. Uh, we, Mark and I sat for a long time trying yeah. to. So if any of you at home have a suggestion, Please shoot us an email, um, as we read all of them because we get not a ton. But uh, if you've got an idea, or post on the Facebook or tweet it at us, any kind of, we will happily use the best one. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, because at the moment we're just going to call it Time to Rank the Monsters. <laughs> Come up with a jingle. Time, Time to, to Rank, rank the, the Monsters. monsters. Get out do, of do, your do, brain. Do, <laughs> you two have to get to, out of each other's brain. To be brain. fair, we did just do the Power Rangers thing. Yeah. Um. So, Pudgy Pig. Yes. Yeah? Now, Pudgy Pig, um, as people may recall from last time, was actually ranked quite high on the list on account of him being a really awesome dude. We did, in fact, have him at number four. So that's a pretty high slot on the list. What's number one? Uh, Uh, Squat. Yeah, that's cool. Number two? Tommy. Yep. And three is... Shell Shock. I don't think I know Shell Shock. Okay. Is that the one that's like Blastoise? Yeah, kind of. With a traffic light on his forehead. That's right, yeah. He's amazing. And He's amazing. And where's Canasty Knight? Canasty Knight is down at number 12, 12. or something. Uh. Yeah. So we'll put this list on the website. Yeah, there'll be a new page on the website. And we'll put a link to it in the show notes. Yeah. So you can look at the list and figure out sort of where we're placing things in context. Um, so do you think PUBG Pig deserves to go up above Shell Shock now, Michael? Um... I almost do, but I think the gimmick of Shell Shock was He's too so amazing. strong. Yeah, I think if Pudgy Pig had been even a little bit lower on the list, this would have bumped him up because yeah. this definitely does raise his profile for mm. me. But he's still not quite as awesome as Shell Shock. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. Yeah. It's a pity that he's already rocking so, so hard yeah. on the list. Um, so content to keep Pudgy Pig at number four? Absolutely. All it's right. going to take a very good kind of villain to dethrone him, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Goldar. Goldar is the other one. Now, Goldar is currently sitting on number... 24. Yeah. So he's 
pretty far down. The reason why that is... Because he's, he's a little bitch. bitch. He's a little bitch. <laughs> he has no redeeming qualities uh, and runs away at every opportunity. He's basically what Starscream is to Transformers. Exactly. Like he, I mean, yeah. the issue is they can't kill him. Yes. Right? So in every one of his fights, he has to run away. He has to bitch out. Yeah. But... Would it make more sense, like, if, if that's the case, like, if he can't die, if he has to be recurring, couldn't it just be readers, like, things are getting bad, I think my, my leading warrior is about to be killed, I'm going to withdraw him, rather than him being like, oh, leaders, you know, like, <laughs> I'll get you next time, not. Like, R- regardless of the construction of the show, I think we have to think about it in-universe. Yeah. Mm. I think in-universe, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and who was he, uh, who was below him on the list? Uh, Immediately below him is Pine Octopus, yeah. the uh, scary clown monster. Oh, uh, that should be further down the list. <laughs> I hate the scary clown monster. I'm inclined to drop him down further because of his continued bitchness. Okay, does he go below, say, Fang from The Yolks on You with his Goonie Bird eggs? Yes. <laughs> yes? <laughs> does he go below Samurai Fan Man? You yes. hate him, don't you? You basically... <laughs> he wants him at the bottom of the list. Does he go below Mr. Tickle Sneezer? <sighs> no, because Mr. Tickle Sneezer is there because he's not really a villain. Okay. So that's about his effectiveness. As Does he go below the Wheel of Misfortune, which was <sighs> a spinning wheel? Literally just a wheel that spun in the air. Um... Oh. Like he gets, does he get points for being sentient? Yeah, I think he gets points of being able to speak. <laughs> does he go below Frankenstein? See, this is a hard. I think this is definitely near where we want him. Yeah, Frankenstein is boring and has absolutely no redeeming features, but at least goes down like a samurai. Right, you know. Which we can't say for gold That That's sounds true. really dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I go down like, like samurai. samurai. Especially if you know about like samurai bushido culture, which is basically like their boy on boy action. Yeah. So. yeah. Hey yo. Oh yeah, we are um, there. Can't wait till we get to Power Rangers Samurai. <laughs> I'll have lots of fun facts for us. Yeah. See. Yeah. I think that's a hard one. Um, I don't think he quite deserves to go below Frankenstein. Okay. Does he go below Twin Man? I think so. What do you think? Yeah, I'd be happy putting him there. All right. It's very low on the list. It is. So Goldar plummets down the list from his already reasonably low slot. He's at number 37 now. 38? No, because I'm going to move everything else up. 37 on the list. All right. So that was this week's edition of whatever we're calling that thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, please someone name it. That would be very nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. <sighs> Lauren, it was lovely to have you back. Thank you yeah. for Did you having... have anything else you wanted to say? Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for... Thank you for electing you the yeah, people's champion. Yeah, the people's champion. Um, Tribune of the plebs. I, I do like that. Not that I think any of you are plebs. Um, I've just done too much Rome study. Quickly, backpedal, backpedal. Yeah, no, like, no, seriously, I do appreciate it. Hopefully I'll be on again soon, maybe with my partner. Yeah. That would be cool. Daniel Son? Daniel Son, that's right. The skull to your bulk or the bulk to your skull? Uh, I like to think we're more squat and baboo. That's yeah. Cool. That's fine. You can you can have that if you'd like Great. that. I'm happy to have that. Squat yeah, no, and we'll definitely be trying to arrange that for some point Great. in the near that would future. Be amazing. Um Matt, is there anything else we had to cover? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Okay. I think we're all good. Uh, thank you very much for joining us once again. We will be back next week with episode forty three. Something fishy. Uh, look, if it's not a fish monster, I'm concerned. I will eat my hat. I will buy a hat and eat a hat. I'm sure you have. A Can hat you do that on the same episode where Maybe you, when you have to do backflips? I'm not. Go- we're not waiting until episode 200 for me to eat a hat. Okay. Well, I guess we should space these things you out. You didn't have a hat when you were a kid or something. Oh, probably, but I don't still have the hat. Did your mum have a hat? I'm sure there is a hat in the house. Yeah. Well, just so you just to pay someone to let you eat it. Or they would want you to eat it because it would be hilarious. I'm not going to eat a hat. I'm sorry <laughs> I said anything. Sarah has, like, she makes crochet hats. They're probably the easiest way to I'm not eating a hat. We'll see you next week. <laughs>